What's up guys, my name's Stu, and today we're going to be looking at my assimilated starship theme build. Playable Borg. This is something a small but rather vocal section of the Star Trek Online player base has been asking for. But uh, we're approaching year 13 of Star Trek Online, and I don't think it's going to happen at this point. Cryptic has repeatedly given the impression that they really don't want to make another playable faction in the game because it is so much work and with how small the team is these days, it's just not feasible these days. More playable Borg ships also seems like a very unlikely thing because, well, just the way they're shaped and the way they're sized and the way they move, it's just translating that into a playable ship, it's, I mean, they've said it before, it doesn't work. I know we've talked about this topic on the channel before and there are some of you that are very adamant that no, playable Borg ships can totally be a thing. Don't yell at me about it, I'm not the one you gotta convince. Anyway, the whole point of this video is that while a playable Borg faction or more playable Borg ship probably aren't going to be a thing in Star Trek Online's future, you can kind of capture that whole Borg feel as it is just with current assets in the game. There are plenty of different kinds of Borg themed gear and there are also ways to make your ship look like it's outfitted with a bunch of Borg tech, so you can easily make your ship look like it's been assimilated by the Borg. So in this video, we're going to be going over some of the stuff that you can use to make your ship look and feel more like an assimilated Borg vessel. Now, the nice thing about an assimilated theme build is that you're going to have a lot of flexibility here because, well, the Borg will assimilate pretty much anything except the Kazon. So you're going to have a lot of freedom in how you set this up. Now, like I said earlier, you're going to be able to put this on pretty much whatever you want because at its core, this is just a beam overload build. And even then, you're not just restricted to beam overload. You can do fire at will, or you can do surgical strikes, or one of the other specialization firing modes. But yeah, it's not all that different from stuff I've done in the past. Now, the same goes with the ship. You could put this on pretty much whatever you want. Obviously, ships that are more inclined to energy weapon builds are probably going to do a bit better, but, you know, one of the nice things about energy weapon builds is that you can throw them on pretty much anything, and they'll still do reasonably well for pretty much anything in the game. Now, for this build, I decided to put this on the Bozeman Intel Frigate, mostly because well, I like this ship, and I think it looks pretty decent in all the Borg stuff. But like I said, you could adapt this to pretty much whatever ship you want. You can see my ship is decked out in a bunch of Borg-themed visuals, so let's start there. These visuals come from the old assimilated Borg technology set, which you can now obtain from the Task Force Omega reputation. While I could have used this gear as normal gear, I didn't because, well, this set is very outdated. Keep in mind, this was one of the first sets introduced into the game. This thing actually predates the reputation system. In fact, the whole reason the visuals tab exists is so you can apply these visuals without having to actually apply this set of gear to your build. Now, because they are in the visual slots means that we won't be benefiting from their set bonuses, but honestly, that's not a big loss. The two-piece is just a small passive hull heal which has a chance to trigger, and when it does, it's locked out for 60 seconds, so you're not gonna get much use out of it. The three-piece bonus is a chance at a shield heal that can also remove dot effects, but again, that also has a 60 second lockout, so meh. The three-piece bonus also grants the ability Assimilated Tractor Beam, which honestly functions a lot like a normal tractor beam. It's a little bit more powerful than your standard Bridge Officer ability tractor beam, but it's not great because it has a three-minute cooldown. So yeah, I would not worry about these set bonuses. This kind of thing is exactly what the Visuals tab was made for. Now, for the gear I am actually using for the build, first you can see a bunch of Assimilated Plasma Beams. You can probably guess why I'm using these for a Borg-themed build. I mean, it's right in the name, Assimilated. While I am using these weapons for the sake of the theme, their proc is actually pretty nice. Assimilated weapons have a chance to trigger a repair over time to your ship's hull, and during that time it'll also buff the damage of the weapon that's being procced. So they're nice for both survival and dealing damage. They also have a unique animation that makes them look much more like tractor beams than usual energy beams that you see throughout the game, which is pretty consistent from what you see from the Borg throughout the shows and movies. That said, we have seen the Borg use normal beam weapons before, and if you'd rather use that sort of look instead, then I would just go with either normal plasma beams or ultimate plasma beams. Visually, both of those fit the Borg aesthetic pretty well too. Another thing worth noting about the assimilated beams is that they do not come in a cannon variant. So if you're wanting to set this up in a cannon rapid fire or scatter volley build, you're not going to be able to do that with assimilated weapons. Because they only come in beam array, dual beam bank, or omni beam. Now, I did kind of struggle with finding a Borg themed torpedo, but in the end I did come away with two possible options. The more obvious one is the Omega Plasma Torpedo. This also comes from the Task Force Omega reputation and is part of the Omega Adapted Borg Technology set. On the surface, this thing is much like a normal Plasma Torpedo, but it does have some special effects because it is reputation gear. The torpedo has a charge effect that will gradually build up over time and be consumed as it fires, and it has a unique firing mode under the effect of Torpedo High Yield. 
Instead of being a normal high yield plasma torpedo, this will fire plasma energy bolts, which are very similar to the energy bolts that V'ger fires. Killing a ship with one of those energy bolts triggers a unique animation that's very similar to what happens when V'ger destroys a ship with its energy bolts. It very much leans into the theory that V'ger has a connection to the Borg's creation, which frankly I never really bought into, but I know some people are into it. Clearly some of the people at Cryptic are into it because, I mean, this thing exists. Like I said earlier, this thing is part of a set and I am using all three pieces of it. The other two being the Kinetic Cutting Beam and the Assimilated Module. The two-piece bonus is actually pretty nice for an energy weapon build giving a chance to trigger Omega Weapon Amplifier for 5 seconds. This will give a small buff to your weapon's power subsystem, buff your weapon power drain resistance, and reduce your weapon's power cost significantly. This is one of, if not the oldest weapon set in the game, but even still today, this is still a nice two-piece set to have on energy weapon builds. The three-piece bonus, however, is rather underwhelming, being a 1% chance when hit to trigger a hull resistance buff. It just says hull resistance, I assume that's like a damage resistance thing. Yeah, it's not something I would normally bother with, but it's here for the sake of the theme. Now, if you're not that into this torpedo, you could instead use the Enhanced Biomolecular Photon Torpedo from the A472 Counter Command Reputation. The animations for this torpedo are, well, they're big green photon torpedoes. And it's a shade of green that totally fits with the Borg aesthetic, so you could work with this as well. But if you're wanting a more lore perspective, these torpedoes are based off of the special photon torpedoes that Voyager developed to fight Species A472. And those torpedoes were made using Borg nanoprobe technology. So there's your Borg connection. I used the Omega Torpedo for the final product of this build, but honestly, I kind of wish I had gone for this one because this is also one of the most powerful torpedoes in the game. So if you're wanting something with more of a punch, this would probably be the better option. In the back, I've got an assimilated Plasma Omni. This is a lockbox Omni, so it is going to be expensive. But like I said, normal Plasma Beams also fit the theme as well, so you could go with a crafted Plasma Omni as an alternative. Next is the Ultimate Modified Plasma Omni. This is the one from the Lobi store. I really wanted to include this because this is still a plasma build and the ultimate set is really nice for a plasma build. Not only does this Omni Beam give a ship-wide 1% buff to crit chance, which I know doesn't sound like much, but this is a weapon that gives a console-like buff. You're not going to see that anywhere else. But I'm also using the console from this set, so I'm also getting the two-piece bonus. Plasma Saturation Bombardment fires an additional plasma bolt every time I fire my weapons, maxing out at 2 per second. So it's just more plasma damage on top of your plasma damage. And the last thing in the aft weapons is the Kinetic Cutting Beam. Like I said earlier, this is part of the Omega Adapted Borg Technology set, and this is also a pretty common sight on a lot of energy weapon builds, mostly because it is an Omni Beam. Well, technically. It has a 360 degree arc like Omni Beams do, but this deals kinetic damage instead of a normal energy weapon type, and it isn't affected by firing modes. Because of that, this is technically not an Omni Beam, which means it's also not restricted like Omni Beams are, which is why you commonly see this thing bundled with two other Omni Beams because beam overload builds on a 5-3 weapons layout need something to put in that third aft weapon slot. But yeah, it's a cutting beam, much like we saw the Borg use on the Enterprise in Best of Both Worlds. The Borg connection here is pretty obvious. Now, the core set, the devices, most of the consoles, they're all part of my usual beam overload set, so I'm not going to go over them. I'm just going to go over the things that are uniquely Borg themed here. So in the consoles, we'll start with the obvious one, the assimilated module. Now, this one doesn't have any click abilities that make it more Borg themed, it just has some passive buffs. Useful passive buffs, but they're just passive buffs. Plus that set bonus. Both of those things are why this console is still commonly used today. But this console also applies a visual to your ship. See these little Borg node things along the phaser strips? That's from this console. The reason there's no console slot in the visuals tab, because currently this is the only console that actually applies a visual to your ship. You can disable it by right clicking on the console and hitting disable visuals. But this is a Borg themed build, so obviously we want to keep it in this case. I've also got the Ultimate Modified Swarm Processor here. This one's not really here for the Borg theme, but it is for the two piece bonus with the Omni Beam. Now, for the consoles that are here completely for the theme, first we have Dispersing Nanoprobe Assimilator. The click ability on this console is an AoE plasma damage attack that will spread up to 3 kilometers away. Ships caught within that AoE will receive a damage over time effect. If you defeat those ships, they will turn into Borg probes. They will then use tractor beam on enemies, chase them, and then detonate when in proximity. Basically creating a bunch of Borg kamikaze drones. Not exactly a powerful console, but it's certainly an entertaining console. This console was an event reward from the Borg Resurgence event from February of earlier this year. So if you missed out on that event, you've missed out on your chance to get this console for free. It's an event reward, so it'll probably show up in Mud's Market within the next couple years. However, if you didn't miss it, then you have this unlocked on your whole account. The next two consoles are from the Infinity Lockboxes, so you'll at least be able to find them on the exchange. This first one is Retrofitted Assimilator. Clicking this will fire a Nanite Laced Torpedo at a target, which will deal some kinetic damage and give a physical damage over time effect onto the enemy. 
but when you defeat that foe, it will turn into an assimilated ship. It'll then follow you around like a pet and fight alongside you. Have you ever gone into the Voth battle zone and seen one of the giant city ships following another player really closely? And then when you get closer, you finally see all the Borg tech effects appear on the ship? That's the effect of this console. Performance-wise, it's hardly the most powerful console in the game, but it's very entertaining and it is certainly thematic in this case. The last one is called Cutting Tractor Beam. Activating this console gives your Universal consoles a 10% bonus damage buff, which stacks up to 10 times. The actual click effect will spawn a Borg Generator. It'll look like a smaller version of the Borg Generators that you see in Infected or Kittimer. This is what will be firing the Cutting Tractor Beam. It'll deal kinetic damage to three targets within range, and if the hull of any of those targets is below 50%, it'll also disable the engines or shields of that target for 60 seconds. Now that's kind of where the Borg-themed stuff ends. Going into the personal and starship traits, there really wasn't much that really fit the Borg theme. There are a couple things, like Adaptive Offense, that one's right out of the Borg lockboxes. There's also a trait called Adaptive Defense, which is also from the Borg lockboxes, but it's just a damage resistance buff, and it's really not something I would ever use, so I didn't feel like buying it. But that's kind of it for the personal traits when you're looking for something with a Borg theme. There were a few options in the Starship traits, but again, not a lot of them were very good. There's Enhanced Nanite Regeneration off the Liberated Borg Juggernaut, but that's just a heal trait. Oh, speaking of the Borg Juggernaut, that also has a console called Disrupted Topological Matrix. It deals plasma damage and disables subsystems. Not super powerful, but certainly thematic. The main reason I didn't talk about it here is because I don't own the Borg Juggernaut. It's a lockbox ship, so it's very expensive. Which is the same reason why I don't own its trait, and even if I did own it, I probably wouldn't use it, because like I said, heal trait. There's assimilated power conduits off the Tal Shiar Adaptive Battlecruiser. Now, this one I actually like, but it's really only going to be useful on exotic particle generator builds. That's the sciencey space magic stuff. So if you're making a Borg-themed EPG build, then honestly you're probably already using this trait, or at least you should be. But on this Beam Overload build, it's not going to do all that much. There's also Synergetic Tactical Systems off the Tal Shiar Adapted Destroyer, but that's just another EPG trait, and honestly it's not a very good one either. And the last Starship trait I could find that sounded even remotely Borg-themed was Reactive Repair Nanites. This comes off of the Breen Sarthlen? Sarthlen? I don't know how to pronounce this. The Breen Carrier, it's an old Winter Event ship. Repair Nanite sounded Borg-themed enough, but again, it's another heal trait, so meh. And as for the duty officers, I mean, there are a ton of Borg duty officers in the game, but a lot of them are crazy expensive, so uh, good luck with that. I'd just use what you have available to you in that case. Now, I did record a combat log of this ship in a run of Ninth Rule, which I was going to include in this video, but then I realized that was kind of pointless. This whole build is designed to be more of a roleplay build than anything else, so you know, any measure of DPS is going to be irrelevant because you could throw this on pretty much any sort of ship and it's going to perform very differently depending on what ship you put it on. Knowing that this ship did 177k during Ninth Rule isn't going to mean anything if you're running, say, one of the Sovereigns or one of the Excelsior variants. There's just too many options here because, like I said, this isn't a meta build, this isn't a DPSing build, this is a roleplay build. So yeah, I felt kind of silly for doing that, but I'll include the recording of the patrol just so you can see it in action.
So yeah, that is my assimilated Starship theme build. I hope this is helpful in you finding your way to be more one with the collective. Now, this was just a space build, so if there's enough requests for it, I could go over a ground build as well, because there's plenty of assets for that as well. If you guys are interested in that, be sure to let me know in the comments down below. And while you're down there, be sure to hit like and subscribe and hit that bell for notifications if you haven't already. If you'd like to further support the channel, you can hit that join button, become a member, or there's also the super thanks button. Or you can find the merch store link in the description below and you can get merch with uh, my name or logo or other various stuff on it. Uh, I'm still working on some more stuff, so uh, keep an eye on that. And uh, yeah, merch, go buy stuff, please. <laughs> okay, anyway, either way, thank you so much for watching. My name's Stu, and I will see you guys next time.